Is it working? All right. Thank you, Kristen. Good morning, everyone. If you can take a seat. It's already 10 o'clock or past 10 o'clock. I appreciate that. Thank you. Awesome. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. All right. Thank you for taking the seats. I appreciate it. I know our worship team is ready to go, so I just want to open up with prayer. and. Uh, so we'll go. How are you? Good, good. Good to see you guys all because I kind of missed a couple of weeks uh, recently. Uh, so good to be here today and looking forward to worship the Lord. So nothing better than really being in with people to worship the Lord. So I'm excited about that. I just was thinking about it. In fact, I was talking to Ginny and um, Georgia. I, was, I wasn't planning on sharing that, but one other thing I was thinking... Uh, what a, what a season, right? Like spring, I love it. Late spring to summer is my favorite, favorite time of the year. I know I have grown over the years to appreciate the four seasons that we have privilege of enjoying throughout the year. Back home, you have either early summer and late summer. That's it. You know, the lowest is 60. So I never had to, I never had to worry about other seasons. But it, it, it took me a while to get used to all these four different seasons and able to enjoy in its own, you know, special things that we could do or, or what we get to enjoy during those times, especially when my kids started to skiing. That was really helped, you know, uh, winter, enjoying a little bit of winter for their sake. So having said that, spring, late spring into, 
into, I don't care for fall really at all, but I know it has good stuff <laughs> in the summer. I totally, totally love it. If I can be outside all day long in a garden, I will do that. In fact, I don't mind, you know, when I, when I retire and have a time going to people's homes and doing their gardening. That's a something that I might actually in do in that. Yesterday, yesterday, yes, hi, yes, yesterday, Yesterday, I ended up, I bought five trees about two, three weeks ago, and I, ha I have not had any time to actually be outside and able to plant them, and the weather is not so good. Yesterday was this beautiful, perfect day for me to plant them. So I said to my husband, today is the day I'm going to plant them. <laughs> Out of, for, you know, it takes a while to plant these big trees, right? Um, so my son came over, and uh, I just was in my glory. I love it. So uh, four out of five, I planted them. They look gorgeous this morning, even to just look at them. You know, I don't know. I enjoy the little things like that. You know, I, I, for me, it's not kayaking. It's not riding a bike. It's not sailing. It's not sitting in the pool. You know, none of that. Sailing, yeah. Rob loves sailing and sitting in the pool, but not for me. He has been already in the pool for three weeks now, I think. I haven't been actually in it yet. Yeah, 90, I think it was 96 yesterday. So... That's right. So just you guys know. But for me, even yesterday, I just, I would rather be. I gardened I don't know how many hours, and I love it. Even though I didn't have it, I just chose to do that yesterday for my own sake. But anyways, having said that, I thank the Lord for different seasons in our lives, you know, how we can enjoy it. And I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about, you know, I know um, it's just so good. I would just, even this morning, got up, and I FaceTimed with my oldest sister, who is probably 63 years old, 64 years old. She's our oldest. And I FaceTimed with her, and she texted me yesterday, I miss you so much, I want to talk to you. And I haven't talked to her. I tried to call her last week, and we didn't connect. So it, it's just so good, his goodness, for, you know, to see, you know, in my family. And, uh, and I was just grateful to have time with her, my brother-in-law able to see, you know, little things like that that just makes you, and we were talking about reminiscing a few things, you know, growing up, and she was my oldest one, you know, she did a lot of things for me, <laughs> and braiding my hair to packing my lunches to all that kind of stuff, so just to do that, but, you know, I was thinking about more than anything, you know, I just want you to, you know, think about, I'm grateful that I feel getting better and better you know, anchoring myself in the Lord, no matter what season I'm in in my life, you know, and my roots growing deeper and deeper. So I want you to think about that. You know, when you're in the garden, gardening, thinking about the plants and how they come to life, you know, I just love it. I go around the yard and looking for, what did I plant last fall? Did they come? You know, things like that. I want to tell you, I planted, I think, four trees last some la four to seven, I think, different things. Every one of them came, already budding, blooming, you know, I'm so, so grateful. I love it, you know, things like that. So think about that. Even when, you, when we're looking at that, anchoring ourselves in the Lord, no matter what season it is, you know, enjoying the, that, that process of growing and getting deeper, you know, your roots deeper in the Lord. I was not like that, you know, uh, for a, quite a while. You know, even though I was, grew up, you know, into the family of strong believers, you know, and Christian Obviously, yeah, I never really, you know, I don't think deliberately walked outside the Lord ever in my life. You know, I never had anything like that. But, and yeah, I know, I know, you know, God's teaching me per personally a lot of different things. It does, for me, it doesn't matter what happens outside, you know, around me. Yeah, they affect, but I feel my strength comes from Him. My my anchoring of the Lord is what keeps me stable no matter what I'm going through. So I want you to think about that. You know, how are we growing our roots? How deep are our roots in the Lord? How are we anchoring ourselves in every season of our life, you know, in Him so that we can, you know, live joyously, you know, with Him being on our side. Again, we go through a lot of things, stretching seasons, right? In fact, I can tell you, I've been stretched in a lot of ways, especially with the writing. Huh? Writing is not my favorite thing. And I'm writing every single day, you know. <laughs> hate it every second of it. But I know I <laughs> hate it, literally. I don't mind researching. I love to dig for material. 
but sitting there, it's not my favorite thing to do, and writing. But that's what I'm going through. So that's a huge stretch for me. But I know I got to get it, and I know I say to the Lord, God, you got to give me the words. You know, I literally say that out loud to myself, you know, and I know he will get me through, you know. But the process of growing in the Lord and recognizing it, I think more than anything for me right now, I'm recognizing it, you know, and, and a, enjoying that idea of no matter what I'm at, no matter what I'm going through, he's going to be there. Yeah, I can cry with him. I can sit with him, enjoy. Like today, I have to tell you, around my house, there are so many birds' nests built, duck even, our mallet duck even built a nest around my wonderful, one of the bush that I have, <laughs> and destroyed part of it. But just seeing that, you know, so many things, I said, oh, thank you, you know. He, in the season, in the right timing, God will bring you to the place that you want to be, right, no matter what. I always wanted it, you know, it is one thing, I mean, I don't know that I've ever told you guys. I really grew up really nice home, you know, by Indian Christian standards, if you think about it. My parents had a really huge gardens. My grandparents grew everything that we ate, you know, from rice to beans to peanuts to sugar cane, you know, turmeric. Turmeric is new for people in the last few years. I grew up with the turmeric. I have orchard of, you know, turmeric every year, twice a year, you know, and coconuts to you know, mangoes trees to banana trees to, we had everything. My parents, my grandparents and parents grew, you know, all the vegetables. So I grew up like that. And I always wanted a, a house with a little land that I could do. And, and a certain thing that I have dreamed of. It's so funny, God really blessed us with that. In fact, my husband went after looking at the house over and over and over and finally got, you know, frustrated with with it, and we wanted to buy a house. We wanted to build a house. Our realtor even saying, you know what, I don't think you'll be happy with anything you want. Go ahead and build it, buy a, a piece of land. And we bought a piece of land. I put two times, um, what do they call it, um, money down for one of the developments, right? Couple of developments, actually, with the Natalie Builders and Forbes. Took both of them out, because in even the last minute, they give you a month or two to finalize it. In the last minute, it just didn't stick. So we took it out, you know, and bought the land. Same thing. See, it just, God came through at the right timing. And Rob actually was drawing, sketching a house that he wanted. The house that we live in right now is just what he drew. Just what he drew. Ask him about that, he will tell you. Being a, you know, engineer, he took the visio and actually drafted everything. And it's exactly the same thing, blueprint. So I, I just thinking about that this morning, and I said, God, I'm grateful. I'm grateful who you are and how, what I have in you, with you, you know, through you. So I just want to say, anchor yourself in the Lord. You know, yep, we go through all these seasons, different seasons, stretching, you know, hard times and things of that nature. But you know what? We can get through with the Lord. In fact, I almost want to say, yep, people around you, your family, they will be helpful, but it's nothing like, nothing like spending time with the Lord, knowing that confidence that he's right there walking step by step with you, you know? He's not ahead of you. He's not behind you. He is with you the entire time, and you have in him, you, you know, he's inside of you, inside of us, right? That revelation of that, I'm just grateful that God brought me to the level that I can Think of those things and enjoy his presence in my life. I just want to read this to you real quick. Sorry, guys. I'm going through this. Again, anchoring ourselves. Think about that. Matthew 7, 24, 25. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet, it did not fall because it hold its foundation on the rock. And that's what happens when our roots are deep in the Lord. And they extend, extend to, you know, anchor and learn different layers of who he is, different layers of how he's going to walk you through. So I just want to know that. 
It is a Psalm 1. We're talking about it. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. In fact, this is really good in, in tr Passion Translation, but I, since I have this one open up, I'm going to read it in RE. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But those who delight in the law of the Lord, or his word, and who meditates on his law day and night, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. I thank the Lord for that. You know, you are. You are. If, you are, if God is your anchor, you are like a tree planted by the waters, and it will yield season after season, you know, time after time, year after year, the fruit that he has for us and through us. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Thank you, Lord God, that you are our hope, you are our strength, you are our stronghold, Jesus. We can walk and be safe. Jesus, we thank you. Your righteousness, our righteousness. Lord God, your identity is our identity. Your identity, Jesus, is my identity. I can take on and be firm, Lord God, who I am. I thank you, Jesus. We invite you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, our anchor. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for your truth, Lord, that we are anchored in. Yes, Lord, we worship you, Lord. We just let our song rise. Just let your song rise to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, we've come to worship you. We've come to hear your heart, Lord. We love you, we love you, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you. Yes, Lord, we love. We love you, we love you, we love you. Savior, we love you, we love you, we love you. Jesus, you are good, you are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty oh, God, mighty God, we praise you. We praise you.
Jesus conquered the grave. You rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. You rose and conquered the grave. Yes, you conquered the grave. You rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Death is defeated. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise you, God. name above all names. Name above all names. We just fix our eyes on you, Jesus, right now. We fix our eyes on you, Jesus. We want our hearts to be in complete alignment with who you are. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your life. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you rose and conquered the grave. We are victorious because of you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Let's just say his name, Jesus, 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 Son of God. The name above every name. We exalt the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord. The name above every name.
What I'd like to do is just sing what a powerful name it is. And I just want you just to declare the power of the name of Jesus over anything in your life that doesn't line up with the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We are just going to, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus, declare his power that every knee shall bow. And that's everything in your life will bow to the, the power of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus. And every sickness, either in your life or someone else's, we declare the name of Jesus is more powerful. Every, every hurt, every pain, every bit of poverty, every bit of separation and divorce and hurt, we declare the power of the name of Jesus. We declare it over our lives, over every part of our being and our families, our community, our friends, and all around us. Hallelujah. What a 
Yes. What a powerful name it is, the name. 
I just want to encourage you. There is something special going on right now. Just anchor yourself in that hope. Live in his kingdom. You know, the kingdom is right there for us to walk in. It's about time we confidently walk in who he is. Confidently go in. I pray against any, any disappointment. I want to, in that place, I want to pray hope. Hope that anchor in the Lord. Hope that lifts us up. Hope that brings us no matter what we're going through. So dig it in. Dig into that hope. Get a hold of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. that temple so let his praises fill this temple of my life let his praises fill the temple let his praises fill the temple for he is good would you just say let your presence fill my temple let your presence Lord let your presence Let your presence fill my temple. Let your presence fill my temple. For you are good. You are good. Father, I just thank you. As I was um, worshiping, I, I saw the glory just come down in the earth. And I, I just saw glory. And as it came, it was literally changing the physical earth. Like it was turning the, the life, the Zoe life of God was coming into the plants and the animals and of course us. And it was changing the very DNA to um, glory, to life. And so, Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your glory, Lord, that changes everything. The water, the waters even, are filled with your life, your glory. So we just 
just worship you, Father. Let's fill every part of you.
verses once more. Let's sing that again. There's something happening here right now. I don't know the whys and the whens, but there are times where we have an opportunity to 
where something hits so deep inside our core with the Lord in worship. And it's at that opportunity we have, that moment, we have the opportunity just to give him the deepest places inside of our being. And it doesn't depend on what's been happening around us. The ups, the downs, the good, the bad. It doesn't depend on that. It depends on will you give him that deepest place inside of you right now. It's a holy moment. A holy opportunity to allow him to that secret place inside of your heart. So Lord, we thank you for that opportunity. So whatever it sounds like to you, just encourage you to say it, to sing it, to pray it out to him, even now, right now. Realizing this is an opportunity. place it all in his hands. Give him your hopes. Give him your dreams. Give him your fears. Give him your weaknesses. He is our Savior. It is in him that we live and we move and we have our being. Just give it all to him. The good, the bad, and everything in between. Yeah. You can have it all. You can have it all, 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 oh Jesus. Yes. Yeah, 
And right now, I just believe that as you're surrendering it all to Jesus, He is sanctifying it. He is making it holy. Do you know that your weakness, your struggle, it becomes your testimony. It becomes His glory as you declare forth what the Lord has done in you and for you and through you. All things work together for good and for His glory. It's that simple. Just give it to Him. Give your whole life to Him, your whole heart to Him in worship, in praise, in surrender. And know, and know, and know your strength, your weakness, your struggle, your victory. It all gives Him glory when you bring Him into it, when you surrender. There's nothing that holds back the love of God. There is nothing that holds back the power of Jesus. The name above all names by which every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yeah. Right now, I just break off fear. I break off shame. I break off feelings of inadequacy. Yeah. God took the dirt, the dust of the earth, and he breathed life into it. How much more can his breath breathe greatness and glory into you today? Just let him breathe on you. Let him fill you afresh. to Jesus but and you've been attracted to Jesus and you've opened up your heart to a certain place but today you're feeling that tug in your inside of you to say I want to give my all every part of my life I'm I'm realizing right now in the midst of this service that there the Spirit of God is in me and I am really experiencing him and I'm really ready to give my full yes to him. 
I'm ready to make you Lord of my life. I'm ready to trust you with everything. If that's you today, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand all over the place. Yep, yep, just raise your hand. Just say, I'm ready today to give my whole life, every part of my life to Jesus Christ. I give my whole heart to you, Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. I don't just accept you as my savior, but I wanna be a follower of you. I wanna follow in your footsteps. I wanna follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. I don't wanna sit on the throne of my life anymore. I don't wanna dabble in this connection. I wanna give you everything that I am. Yeah, yeah, just give your, Give that place to him right now. I feel like even you raising your hand or standing, whatever you did is, is that is just a, is God seeing that right now. He's seeing your yes. He's seeing that place inside of you that says, yes, there's something deep in me today. I feel that grace to say, yes, yes, I'll trust you. I'll trust you with everything. And you're even going to start experiencing. You're not gonna feel fear. You're gonna feel so free. Freedom is coming over you right now as you just give your heart completely over to Jesus, completely trusting in Him. We don't just worship the name of Jesus. There was a word here this morning that said, we trust in the name of Jesus. And today we are putting our full trust in you, Jesus. Our full trust. Yeah, and you may be someone who's really already surrendered your life fully as much as you know, but you know, sometimes we grow tired, we grow weary. And even though outwardly we're doing all the same things that we normally do, we're, we're serving God, we're serving our family, we're not jumping in any crazy sins, but our heart is tired, our, our worship is tired. And this is a moment I believe God wants to breathe on our hearts and fan that flame. So even if that's you, maybe you didn't raise your hand before because you feel like, well, I'm already fully surrendered. I don't know what else I can surrender. But if you just know that there's this, this place where you just want God to breathe afresh on your life, to breathe on your passion, to breathe on that place where you say, everything for you, Jesus everything for you where that cry is just erupting from within you in a fresh way i want you just to raise up your hands to join yes, with jesus. all the others and just say i just want more of you yes, i just want more of you breathe on my jesus. faith god breathe on my tired yes i want it to be a passionate yes i want it to be a powerful yes breathe on my worship breathe on my praise god Fill me with your breath, God. It's in you that I live and move and have my being. It's because of your strength and your love and your mercy that is new every morning, God. And I just right now place myself in that. I depend on you. And I say, yes, God, breathe on me.
This is an important moment right now. Just releasing our full surrender, our full yes. The Lord has just been speaking this over and over to our hearts, this whole service. And I just wanna open up the invitation to you to just say if you have decided to follow Jesus today and to make him the full Lord of your life, Raising your hand was amazing. Standing up was amazing. That's awesome. But you also have the opportunity to be baptized. We're gonna be baptizing people in a couple weeks after the Sunday service and we're doing classes downstairs right now. So like next week, I encourage you to come out at 9 a.m. down to the Miller Room and just for 45 minutes, we're just gonna go over what baptism is and, and get ready for June 6th when the baptism will take place. If you wanna make that public confession of your faith before heaven and before earth, and you feel that tug in your spirit right now, you're like, yes, it's time for me to step out not just sit in my chair, which is beautiful. I'm thankful that you came, it's awesome. But he, if you're ready to take the full plunge into receiving the fullness of the Spirit, I encourage you, say yes in this moment. Step out and say yes to baptism. Join us. 
I'm speaking to your spirits right now because what happens many times is our flesh says, ah, there's, there could be another, another moment, another time. But listen to what the Spirit of God is saying in you right now and allow the strength of His Spirit to move you to this next step. There's grace here right now. There's grace here right now for that yes. Hallelujah. We just bless you. We just bless you. We just bless you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, your presence in our lives today, Lord God. That is what we have in you through you, Jesus. We can experience that glorious presence. Jesus, we thank you for being here. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Father, for who you are. Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to say, you know, there's something this uh, Rob just shared with me as we're in the middle of the worship time. If you can, I don't know where, which direction where Stillwells live. I'm not sure. But if you could do me a favor. They mean so much to all of us here. I know they called Rob saying something about that he's not doing well. And uh, he must have gone through uh, one of those treatments that he has to go through. So I just, my heart been heavy ever since I heard that. So I just want you to raise him up. He is the father of this house. And he has been poured so much into everybody's lives. Every person that new comes here, that they experience his touch and his love and who he is. So, Lord, Lord Jesus, we just come before you right now. We we'll lift him up, Lord God. We we'll lift him up, Jesus. We just pray strength to his every piece of his body, every cell of his body. I speak life, Lord God, to every part of his body, Jesus. Right now, the pain to go. To be gone, Lord God. I speak strength to his bones, Father. I speak strength and, Lord God, perseverance in his mind, Father. Lord Jesus, speak life, Lord God. Life more abundantly to his body right now. In Jesus' name. Lord God, that he will not ever, ever. Not that he would do it, but I will know that he will stay with you, Jesus. That you're our anchor, our hope, Lord God. That I speak, Lord God everything that he needs right now your life to flow through him every part of his body jesus your blood to flow through him lord god i pray that you straighten up everything jesus lord god we asking you lord that meet him right now jesus and that faith will rise with him lord god faith faith will rise within him jesus your hope will rise in him lord god we thank you lord we thank you jesus I just pray your presence to flood his mind, his body right now, Jesus. In Jesus' name. I know it would be probably very difficult for him to miss a service. So I just, Lord God, pray that you fill him, fill him, fill him with whatever he needs. From head to toe, Father, we thank you, Lord. We lift him up, Lord God, as our father of this house. We lift him up, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And we just pray in your name that he'll be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, guys. I just hope you had something special today. You know, if not, go after it. Okay, that's all I'm going to say to you. But I was supposed to be actually in West Seneca at a church this morning. One of my teachers invited me because she was a special something going on, and her mom and her was playing violin. And she's been, you know, after for quite a while. I almost wanted to go there, but I know I also need to open the service today. So I came, but oh, my gosh, right? I'm glad that I'm here. So anyways, um, yeah, that's who God is.
said, you're welcome to correct me anytime if I do. All right, introducing myself. I am Hadisa Bachelor, <laughs> if you don't know me. From India, been here for 30 years. Anyway, so that's good enough, right? Oh, I am an American, that's true. I have become an American because I, when, if you want to teach in New York State, at that time when I was looking for teaching, you have to become a citizen, which I did. I'm so grateful, grateful for the Lord, you know, what he has done and brought me through. Honey, are you going to come up? Uh, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I guess not. Um, I'm sorry? Oh, there you go. You're getting back to me. Okay, that's good. Uh, I take it. Um, all right, announcements. Open heavens. This Friday night from 7 to 9 p.m., guest band called Fervent, right? Uh, we'll be here, so if you can make it, that would be great. So open heavens this Friday night from 7 to 9 p.m., guest band, Fervent. Junior and senior high, families, bonfire night this Saturday. So it's the, we hear a lot of times. My kids used to love it, especially Courtney, let me say, not Shane. Shane is not into that kind of stuff. Shane's like me. Bonfire. So uh, make it to that one Saturday, May 22nd at 6 p.m. May 22nd at 6 p.m. at the Pushex house. All right? Hot dogs and drinks provided. Hmm. Hot dogs on top of that. Okay? <laughs> Don't eat hot dogs. Never eat one. Not planning on eating one. <laughs> Never ate one, not planning on eating one, that's for sure. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so hot dogs, I don't know what's gotten into me. God, that's you. All right? Neither is the hamburgers. Don't want them either. Uh, go for it, all you want. Uh, feel free to bring a snack to share, okay? So at the push eggs, <laughs> bonfire, and have hot dogs, okay? <laughs> I can't believe it. I won't say that again because I, th I think that I will lose it. Um, Bill Johnson, okay? Pierre Duplessis. Bishop Joe Garlington will be here in Buffalo. Yay, right? So uh, make sure you guys, you know, set some time outside. King Jesus Conference at the Tab in Orchard Park. Worship teams. Chimera, Tab Worship, and our own Vanguard Worship. Okay, so you don't want to miss that. Yeah. So again, Joe Garlington, awesome. Of course, Bill Johnson, I'd say no more, you know. Uh, Pierre Duplessis, he actually was with one of the conferences. And that day, we got filled with the Holy Spirit like you wouldn't believe. You know, I remember to this day. Okay, we were all on the floor, I believe, right? In the fellowship hall. So you never know what will happen. So if you want to experience something like that, be there. So King Jesus Conference at the Tab in Orchard Park. And May 26th through 28th, I hope most of you are registered. Cost to attend is $149. Um, online streaming, $49. So you might want to do that if you can't make it, which is fine. Uh, so you're welcome to do that. Do they have still time to register, I'm assuming? Okay, so please do that if you want. And click the link from our Vanguard website to go directly to the site, you know, cov what is it? covenantinc.org. covenantinc.org to register today. All right, so that's about it. And I believe that's it. So let's do our offering, please. So if you could stand, I would appreciate it if you can stand. Okay? I feel like I'm going to fall. I don't know what it is. All right. So here we go. Uh, King Jesus Conference. I see. We are people of his presence, a place of encounter, confident and loving children of God. We are a house of hope, a hospital for healing. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, and relationally. We are a regional equipping center 
to empower every believer with the love and power of Jesus Christ. We offer up ourselves a fresh new day. We give you all that we have. We thank you for giving us the privilege to partner with you. Let our yes bring the salvation and joy of knowing Jesus to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Did I forget anything? Visitors. Uh-oh, I should have done that first. Any visitors? Oh, we have somebody. Visitors, yay. Welcome to Vanguard, two of them. Welcome to Vanguard. Get to know somebody before you guys leave because it's a powerful place, a place of love, right? Meet, meet Miss Ginny Pushak right there, okay? Get a hug from her personally. You will be changed forever, okay? So make sure you do that. Again, welcome to Vanguard. Thank you. All right. So is there anything? Oh, you're going to say one thing? Go right ahead. More, Lord. More over Hadassah. <laughs> That's the most anointed uh, announcements ever. That was so fun. I was waiting for her to have that posture that I get sometimes. Where I'm like, <laughs> she was close. She was close. I was going to say, you know, what we experienced today in his presence is really spectacular and special. And it's because we've stewarded, stewarded. I mean, obviously God is coming here. And it's, there's a huge God part, right? But there's a piece in, of us, in us that just so honors him. And I can't tell you how important it is for you to come to this conference that we're having out at the TAB. It's so important because what you all carry and know how to navigate in worship and in its presence, we need you, every one of you, to come out there to release it with us. It would be so amazing. And it's not just about, yes, you have so much to give, but you are going to get so blessed. And, um, and I would just encourage you to say, I'm going to give up a couple vacation days and go to this conference. I, I would just pray about it, seek the Lord about it, but I'm telling you, we don't get this every day in Buffalo, New York, where we get this kind of group together, and to be able to do this with the tab, which is like our sister church kind of now, <laughs> um, due to the relationships going on. So... I just encourage you, if you have an opportunity, take a couple days off, spend the money, and go there. If you can't and you really have to work, do the online so you can just listen to it while you're sitting at your desk or while you're working on your machine at work. Listen to the online because it's going to be so good. Amen. You know, really quick tag on to that. I have heard people say stuff about being busy or whatever and having to work and things like that. And these are people, I know how tons of you have said to me, I want to go to Reading with you. I want to go to Bethel with you. And I'm thinking, okay, you're willing to spend thousands of dollars and take like a week off work to fly all the way to Bethel, but Bill Johnson is coming here, right? And we get to be a part of this incredible move of God here in our region, which is is as amazing as it is, and I pray everyone, if you desire to go to Bethel, will get to go to Bethel, uh, even this year maybe, but uh, that there's something so significant about what God wants to release to our region here, why he is moving Bill Johnson all the way from there to here to release to us to come in the flesh, and Joseph Garlington, and Pastor Pierre, and then even we have some exciting news about, we just found out how many of you have been following what Mario Marillo's doing in California with the tent meetings and just gathering all of the state of California together, the church, to rise up. He had a, a huge tent meeting of 900 pastors from all over California that got together to, they started with just a breakfast, but the Holy Spirit broke out. They were worshiping and they ended up just spending hours worshiping together. They went inside, no masks, like all of them together, and they were just pouring out their praise to the Lord, and the Lord began to move, crying out for revival for California. And the Lord began to move, and then Mario felt impressed by the Lord to start putting up this huge tent and doing just revival tent meetings 
right? Like old school. And they said people were flooding the altars in, by the hundreds and just getting saved, people getting healed, miracles, all kinds of stuff, right? So. Well, they got so big that their tent didn't hold them. So they put the call out there and all of a sudden we hear a tent is being sent from Buffalo, New York to California to that revival. And the second I heard that, I said, that's a sign. That's a sign. God is going to move in Buffalo. There's something amazing about this moment that it came from Buffalo, New York to go there. Well, come to find out. Uh, Mario's coming here, and actually I want to tag on to that. When I had heard on Flashpoint that this tent from Buffalo was being sent to California, I had even told my husband, I said, there's something on that that's coming back to us. I had no clue, but it's coming back. God is moving in California. Now he's coming to New York State. And what two amazing states are we seeing God move now, now. Revival is now. It starts now. We don't have to start. It's starting. It's already stirred so many hearts. So I want to encourage you guys. Like, we want to start prayer nights. Like, maybe once a week where we just start to gather and we start to pray into this revival that's coming. Yeah, and uh, I just want to say revi revival is attracted to us now. Revival is attracted to Vanguard. Like, we used to go after revival. We'd go after his presence. We would run after it. If we had to go to California, if we had to go wherever, we would chase after. We have to go to Toronto. We went to Toronto. But you know what? Now revival is attracted to us. And I'm so excited about that. A matter of fact, this is what I mean by it's attracted to us. A few months ago, we started working with some people in Sozo, um, Bethel Rochester, and we started working with their group over a year ago. And then we found out Batavia really wanted Sozo too. So we started connecting with these people in Batavia. And at the same time, Pastor Jessica and Christina and different ones of us had gone to the Covenant, not Covenant, LifeNet meetings and, inter and um, just started interacting and connecting with Lee and what's his name? Paul and their church in Batavia. Actually, they're going to let us use their location for, like, the area to release Sozo activations and stuff. So we've been in connection with them. And I'm like, this is such a God setup because you know what happened with me? Ah, you want to say it? So then they were calling. I talked to them at this LifeNet meeting about our Kingdom Builder teams, and they were like, yes, 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 we want to have you guys come and do, like, a conference at our church. And then I got sick, and they called, and I texted that I was sick because I missed the call. And she was like, oh, when you feel better, we can connect after that, you know, just rest and pray blessings. So a couple weeks goes by, and I talk to her, and she says, well, when I first reached out, it was so that you could come here and do a conference for us. But now uh, we found out that um, they were the church that sent the tent to Mario, and so they got a call. They purposefully, like, did not ask. They were praying into it, saying, Lord, you speak to Mario's heart. We only want him to come if he feels led by the Lord. And so they got a call from him saying, God has put you on my heart. I believe I'm supposed to come there and do revival tent meetings for New York State, starting in Batavia, but this whole, he was talking about Buffalo, Batavia, Rochester area, and he didn't know Bill Johnson was coming. So when they, because they're signed up to come to the conference, so when they told them that Bill was coming, then Mario was connecting with Bill so that Bill can tell, because Bill's been all those revival tent meetings in California, so Bill's going to talk about it at the conference this coming month. So it's like all, you see how it's all connecting together. And both Bill Johnson and Mario Murillo felt the Lord speak independently to their hearts to say, my hand is on the Northeast. You need to go there. I want to pour out my spirit. So I need you to hear that. It is important. So whatever you need to do to be a part, I do not want anyone to miss 
what God is about to, to unveil, right? So if you need to take days off, if you need to whatever, if you're financially strapped, like talk to us. But it's so important that you prioritize this and get out there. So I, so I speak to your identity as vanguardians who are called to be forerunners and at the front that we are preparing ourselves now and we're not going to miss out on what God's doing today. Um, today was just, I thought, oh, God's already setting us up, right? And it's going to happen. And it, the Mario thing begins July 17th where he's going to meet with leaders and then a few weeks later begins the revival tent meetings. So we want to prepare ourselves now. So who's interested in meeting together to pray like one night a week? Come on. Come on. How many of you want revival? God is moving. I should see like people pouring into this place for prayer. So I want as soon as we as leaders, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. We will yeah, let you know. Just without just I know. Well, Jessica has no problem with prayer. So <laughs> legit. She has no problem with prayer. So We'll just figure it out amongst, you know, leaders that what night of the week we're going to meet, and then let's do this. You want to do Tuesday nights? Tuesday nights. All right. So Tuesday nights, we'll say 6.30 or 7. 7 o'clock. Be here. I won't say be square if you're not, <laughs> but be here. Tuesday nights, 7 p.m., and let's just pray. Let's saturate. You know, they send teams here weeks prior let's get ahead of them let's soak it out come on oh oh and i already volunteered you all anyone who wants i told lee and paul um because they were like well we were gonna have you come to do a conference for us because they don't have a strong holy spirit culture they are spirit filled and but they don't they're not as equipped, you know, and so they wanted us to come and equip their people. So right away I was like, oh, yes, I will get you tied in with Tommy and Amy and Covenant, and I'll bring Kristen, and you guys know Katie, and we can, whatever you need us to do for this event, we'll help with worship and prayer teams, and if you want us to run trainings and all of that, we're good. We'll do anything for revival in this region. So you are all signed up and, and <laughs> volunteered. <laughs> So, um, yeah, just this is such a powerful time. Um, I know time is short. I don't know. Uh, should we show the video, too? Gosh. And then it's so funny. I had a message, and then God gave me a whole nother message during worship. <laughs> so now I have, like, a, a fresh message. And then there's a video. Okay, show the three-minute video, because this is going to give you a little extra excitement for what God can do with a yes, will do. Okay, this is a baptismal, obviously. It's in a tent. <laughs> she couldn't walk. She was carried to the tank. She couldn't walk. She was so sick with Crohn's disease. She was in bed for months. I saw white when I went in there. You saw white. She said what? She's completely pain free. She got filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Nausea's gone. Nausea's gone. The nausea's gone. I want to drink. I want to drink water. Can we get, a, can we get some water, please? A bottle of water? Drink. There's some right behind the camera right there. A bottle of water? One that's not open, guys. I don't. Not something wrong, somebody. I can stand. She hasn't been able to eat or drink without nausea, vomiting. <laughs> So you came in here tonight. I've been in bed for months. You've been in bed for months. I haven't walked. I can't even walk. My leg. My leg. He loves me. So when she went in here, when she went in here, she came in the first thing she said was he loves you. And he's not mad at me. Oh, 
First thing, when she went on the water, she came up, she said, he loves me and he's not mad at me. Yeah, that was just um, earlier this month. And, you know, those folks, they were just being faithful, preaching the gospel, baptizing people, praying, and attaching faith. And this is so important for us, even like what I said in the worship, that sometimes we, we get into a routine, and our faith becomes routine, our actions become routine. But attaching faith, re kindling that place of our love for Jesus and and letting it even I was thinking about um, I don't know how many of you heard the message that uh, Bill Johnson I guess I'm just going to scrap my notes but the message that Bill Johnson spoke I think it was a week ago about obedience how many of you were able to hear that message okay a few of you um, you should check it out but um, I know the Lord has just been stirring on my heart about this place of love for Jesus and obedience that he wants to to breathe on that place in us more Lord <laughs> and um, I just know that right now even myself like I know I've been obviously I just came through sickness and there's been things going on so even myself I am pushing to push through that tiredness and I felt like the Lord was speaking to me all week. Um, we redecorated Judah's bedroom, and, and Judah at one point, um, I don't know, the Holy Spirit, I guess, put it on his heart, but he just was like, Alexa, play. We were all in his room. He's like, Alexa, play Keith Green. And so Keith Green music was just cycling through, which is like a connect point for Justin and I. Obviously, our kids know that. <laughs> and so... Um, I was listening to that old song where Keith is singing that scripture, to obey is better than sacrifice. I don't want your money, I want your life, right? And, and then um, just this thing, and it's more than just Sundays and Wednesday nights, right? And he's singing this song about getting out of the motions of being a Christian and coming to that place of surrender. And Bill Johnson, the nutshell of his message, he talked about the parable of the sower and the seed. And when he got to the part about the good soil, he said, the, the difference in the good soil, I'm thinking he's gonna say, you know, whatever is, uh, they applied it or obeyed or whatever. He said, it's surrender. It's a surrendered heart. And, um, and he said, you know, if you want great faith, all, how many of you want great faith and want to see miracles like that, right? Um, we all want great faith. And he said, if you start evaluating your faith and, and seeing your lack of faith and all that kind of thing, you're not going to grow your faith. He said, you can never do it by self-evaluation. The only way to grow your faith is through obedience. He said, just obey your way into great faith. All the small little things that God says to do, do them with faith, and you will have great faith. You will, because God will grow your faith. He'll give you those step by step, and you will be amazed. I, when I went to India, and I prayed for those people whose blind eyes were open and all those things in front of my eyes, it was like I, I was just obedient, doing what God asked me to do, I didn't expect that. I was expecting healing, but I didn't expect that every single person I prayed for would be healed. And when I got on the bus every night, I would just cry because I was so overwhelmed by what God was doing. 
And, and that's all he's asking from us is a yes and a surrendered heart to say, okay, whatever you say. So I, and I want to just say this, that um, I know um, that if you love me, you will obey my commands, right? It's John 14. Um, I used to read that, that it would say, like, prove, prove that you love me by obeying, right? And I, I, one day the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 you're getting it all wrong, Jessica. If you love me, if you just love me, I, that love for me will empower you to be obedient. So if you're struggling in an area, stir up your worship, stir up your p- place of praise. And, and, you know, sometimes we feel like, well, I'm not feeling it. It feels forced or fake or something. But you know what? That's what the scripture talks about, giving a sacrifice of praise. And that is actually precious to the Lord. When you don't feel it, and you know what? I talked to Liz, right? And how much was Liz such an explosive breaker anointing in worship, her and Jeff, as they were worshiping, right? And Liz said to me this morning, I started to obey what I heard from Steve Backland. She said, I came in tired. I came in just not feeling it. And she said, I just decided that I was going to offer a sacrifice of praise and I was going to just shout and dance and jump and get excited in obedience and faith. And she said something broke off of her, but she also broke open things in the atmosphere for all of us. Amen? So your yes and your obedience and your sacrifice of praise is something that God is asking for and looking for in this time. Don't let yourself stay tired. Um, The other thing that I wanted to say, Sarah told me a testimony yesterday, too, how she said, you know, things were rough in the house and different stuff was coming and discouraging them. And and she just decided, I am going to prioritize worship. I'm going to set a 20-minute time every day where I just worship the Lord and I declare things. And she said the first day, you know, she kept getting interrupted by the kids because she homeschools and whatever. And, you know, that can kind of set you in a little funk. Then, (laughs) Then the second day, you know, she still was trying to do it, and it wasn't really kicking in. But, you know, that third day, something about that third day, right? (laughs) And on the third day, Sarah had breakthrough. (laughs) She she was worshiping, and something just broke off her and broke off their family and just shifted. But it was when she set herself to say, you know what? I am going to pursue worship. And no matter what I feel like, no matter how tired I am, no matter how busy I feel, I'm going to just prioritize 20 minutes of worship. So I just want to put this out. I believe the Lord is calling us into the more, and I know all of us are in different places, but if you're tired, if you're discouraged, if you're struggling, it's okay because God will move you out, and all you need to do is get your eyes on him, get your eyes on his faithfulness, you know, worship him. And, and as you do, something will be released to you. A fire will be lit in you. A strength will come to you. Um, I'm going to read to you just Ephesians 3 from the Passion Translation, uh, verses 14 through 20. It's Paul's, I love this title um, that Brian Simmons gave it, Paul prays for love to overflow. So hear this prayer. I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you, and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then, out of that place of love, you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all of its dimensions, how deeply intimate 
and far-reaching is his love, how enduring and inclusive it is, endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding, this extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. So verse 20, which is my necklace. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all of this. Who accomplishes it? God. We just show up. We just get on our face. We just turn on the, the worship. We just start to sing. And he does it. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. And from that place, we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church, in every generation, through Jesus Christ, and all that will yet be manifest through time and eternity. Isn't that amazing? So, Father, I just pray right now, your, your target, your bullseye is on our region. You have invited us into this place of not just serving you and, and singing to you, but Lord, you want to move in your revival spirit and power in a greater way than we have ever known. And God, we want to see the, the lost saved. We want to see the sick healed. We want to see the blind have sight and the lame walk, Lord. We want to see your kingdom come and your will being done in amazing ways here on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, we just ask right now that, that you would show us anything, like Hebrews says, any any weight, any sin, anything that's been entangling us and slowing us down from running after you and running with you, God, that you would show us those things and you would give us the grace to fully surrender, to fully come back to that place of passion. We ask that you would strengthen us with might in our inner man by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord that you would just breathe on us, that you would breathe on us, God, that we would be your ministers, that we would be ready, ready and able to be used by you, God, to see countless people saved here in our region, to see countless people healed. God, we just say yes to you afresh. We say yes to you afresh, and we commit our hearts to pursue you. We commit our time saying we will carve out that time, even if it's like Sarah did, 20 minutes, just to worship you. However much we can do, Lord, you're, would you, Holy Spirit, just pro provoke us and, and prod us and stir us? Lord, we know you've given us the Holy Spirit to be our guide, to be our teacher, to be the one who convicts us and leads us into all truth and strengthens us. And so, Holy Spirit, we just say, have your way. Have your way in us. We invite you, speak to us, guide us. We know we've been born for such a time as this. Yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. And I want to say this before we close. Do you guys remember me showing the picture of New York State that Justin gave me at Christmas? And how God said, I've given you New York State. Take authority over New York State. Don't just accept things that, that are happening. Don't just, you know, let things go on around you. I want you all to hear that and to say that with me. That just say right now, God has given us this land. He has given us New York State. We are his kingdom ambassadors. Our words are powerful. Everywhere we set our foot, the kingdom of heaven comes. So New York State, you're about to change. 
You're about to shift. The kingdom of heaven is coming. We declare glory over New York. Salvations, miracles, healings, the move of God like never before. Niagara Falls of the Spirit. Yes, Lord. Amen. <laughs> All right, so the Lord had actually started to speak to me about three years ago when I was, uh, okay, okay, be my Vanna. Okay, so the Lord started to speak to me about three years ago in a time of intercession where he asked me to go in my studio and to just even spend half an hour just putting something on a canvas. So for 30 days, I know this is like 30 days worth of work, but... Every day, he just inspired me, and you know what? His words were, I love New York. He loves New York. And he just had me just take my time, and if you see, if you know, Buffalo has also got a nickname of the City of Light. And he just showed me that it was just cascading in the glory of his gold. And I painted that there, and then we have the Niagara Falls, and it was just going to flood. <laughs> the New York City area, and, and for whatever reason, I was, he's like, I want you to put an evergreen. This was before I knew the appeal to heaven. The symbol is a evergreen tree. So, you know, we have a responsibility to be praying into this, and he's just going to flood through us, and we are going to saturate New York State. We are going to see heaven break out, and Every one of us carries a piece of that. Every single person in this room, you carry a piece of that revival. And like completing a puzzle or a painting, you're needed. So. And this is really funny because for weeks I was saying, um, you know, and I'm sorry if this bothers somebody, but all, I, I just feel like all of the things, like how uh, Cuomo's now made it, that you can't go to a SUNY school if you don't have a vaccine and the passports and all that stuff, I don't believe that that control is from the Lord. And I don't believe that it is um, even in, you know, in line with our constitution. I believe that it is uh, overriding the way that God designed this nation to function for his glory, our founding fathers, prayed and they called for fasting and prayer throughout all of the states when they were crafting the Constitution of the United States of America, and it is the longest standing constitution of any nation currently in the world, and I believe that's because it was made with prayer, and it was founded on biblical values, and um, so I just know, for me, I've been saying, there's so many people who disagree regardless of what you think about the vaccine, the fact of being forced or you're blocked out of places, that is wrong. And so I've been saying we need to rise up together and like we need lawyers or somebody to put, put something forth. We need to be able to sign it. We need to see New York State free, right? Free New York. And so um, we, I was just like saying this because I didn't really know what to do about it. And I'm praying about it. I'm like, Lord, what do we do? How do we do this? I know there's easily a million people in New York State that would say, I disagree, right? So we were approached by someone to speak at a conference here in Western New York in June, end of June, which I'll tell you more about at another point. But... It's rallying multiple groups of Christian business owners and leaders, and they're going to have Paul Cambria, who is the lawyer who won against New York State for the fitness center here in the area, and um, they're going to have medical people, and they're, they're patterning it similar to what Rama did and making it about New York State. And, and rallying us here in New York State to rise up together. And there's even a nonprofit called Free NYS. I was like, what? So we didn't know this person, but they came and asked us to, to be a speaker at this conference. 
And um, so we're going to be speaking at that too. So God is doing a lot right now. And our prayers are powerful. I want you to believe that God has given us New York State, all of it, including New York City. We are not giving up New York City for his glory. And pray and declare that God wants this nation and this state to be used and to be full of his goodness and glory. So we are going to be part of that vanguard, the forerunners leading the charge. Amen? All right. So that's enough for today. I know it's past noon and the child care people get crazy. So <laughs> so if you have kids, go pick up your kids. But please, 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 please go register. You can go on our Vanguard website. I want as many Vanguardians as possible to be at this conference because there's going to be an impartation released that you do not want to miss. All right, be blessed. And if you want prayer, the prayer team will be up front here. We love you guys. <laughs>